Hello, Hope, and welcome to worship. It is Sunday, May 24th, uh, and we're grateful that you're here with us, and we're going to continue meeting uh, in this way until uh, a leadership team kind of decides it's best to change things up, but I'm just grateful for your faithfulness and showing up, and even though in your, you're in your PJs, it's all good. We're just good, glad to be together, and we, I, I really do believe, I know I say it every week, but I believe it's through the Spirit that we're together. I know physically we long to be together, um, but the Spirit unites us as a church, and I hope you believe that, and I hope you trust that. Uh, I want to share um, one of my favorite kind of statements I've heard over the years is this idea that God loves us right where we are and not where we should be. And I think sometimes there's this belief of, I got to get all my stuff together, and then God will love us. And I just want to let you know that God loves you right where you are and not where you should be. And here's what I mean by that. Some of you have said to me that you feel as close to Jesus as you've ever been, like this has been actually a spiritually forming time for you, and others maybe would say the opposite of that. Some of you in our church are frustrated with our governor and with the CDC and with the president and with the school board, and some are not. Um, some work for companies that are doing really well right now. Your jobs are doing well, and others, you're struggling. Some families and relationships are really being strengthened with this time together. And others are, are having a hard time. This is the church. That's a picture of the church. And every time we gather together, either in person or like this, that's just true. And people are coming from different places. And each of us are seeking God today, uh, the one who is our refuge and strength. And so I want to pray for us just knowing we come in all kinds of different ways to seek the God that we need um, who gives us peace and is our refuge and strength. So would you pray with me as we begin worship? Uh, today. Let's pray. The earth shakes, the mountains quake, tempting our hearts to fear. Yet God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A virus alters lives and economies. Our news feeds are flooded with information. And yet God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When we long to be with those that we miss dearly, we take comfort in knowing that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Whether we've reached the end of our patience, the end of our finances, or even the end of our days, we rest in the truth that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Jesus, we look to you, Lord God, and we worship you in these times of trouble. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We have some uh, things that we would love to tell you just about the life of our community, things that are happening. And so Katie has the first one she'd like to share with us. Yes. Um, today, guys, we are starting a new series, and this is on the Holy Spirit. So Nate's going to be illuminating for us um, some really beautiful things to think about and connect to in regards to the Holy Spirit, his work in our lives, and ways that we can seek him, especially in this unique season that we're in. The second thing is, as we uh, have a time of offering, um, many of you have been giving in different ways, and so we, you encur we encourage you to do that. You can give uh, online, uh, and if you go to our main website or send out links, you can give that way, or you can also mail in checks to our P.O. Box. All that stuff is on our website, hopeforwilmington.com. And so, um, again, just grateful for your generosity, generosity of comments, generosity of prayers, generosity of finances, generosity of people just asking, how can we help? Um, we've actually had some folks in our church say, let us know if someone's struggling to make ends meet because we want to help them. Uh, that's, that's a sign of a healthy church, and I'm grateful for that. So I hope you hear that uh, as you continue to give generously uh, to the, lo uh, the, the mission of the local church. Yes, and also uh, you are going to be hearing from the elders in the next week or so. Um, I know that a lot of churches in our community have been sending out surveys to kind of get the temperature of the congregation, but um, because Hope is a very relational environment, we yeah. thought it might make sense to connect with you personally one-on-one, -on -one, give you a call. So you'll be hearing from elders and Nate and myself um, just to see, check in how you're doing emotionally, spiritually, and based off that information, we're going to kind of integrate that leadership team will look to taking next steps for returning to worship when that's appropriate. But first of all, we just want to see how you're doing. So um, if you get a call this coming week, uh, that's what that's in regards to, and we look forward to chatting with you very soon. And we ask that you would keep praying for that leadership team and the staff uh, as we have to make decisions, and we're going to keep praying for you. And I think uh, that's, that's the best way to proceed. So we appreciate that. And um, 
We're going to continue as we sing. Eric and Sam are leading us in worship today. And if you'll see on the link that we sent out, there are lyrics that if you want to sing alongside, the uh, first song we're singing is Holy Spirit and then the goodness of God. And uh, we'd love for you to worship along with us. Let's sing. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted it. Comes free, and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and
place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Father, we worship you. God, we praise you for your goodness, God, and and we ask you to remind us of your goodness, even when we can't feel it, God, when life around us is difficult, God, that you would remind us of your constant goodness. God, you never change. 
You are with us constantly, and you are worthy of praise in every circumstance, in every season. You are worthy, God. Father, we praise you, we love you, and we offer all of this to you. We pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, Eric and Sam. Grateful for uh, you leading us in worship. And the last song, Goodness of God, is probably one of my favorites. Um, I hope it helps you connect uh, during this season. Um, I was reading an article, not like a real article, you know, one of those that you scroll and find on the computer. And the, the, the title of the article was Eight Pandemic Phrases That People Hate. And so think about that. What phrases or words do you think right now people are fed up with, people are, are done with? What would you say? Um, obviously, social dis- distancing made the list. Uh, this was written by dictionary.com, the leading authority on words. And the other word was unprecedented, which I think is funny. If you watch any kind of political things, everything is unprecedented. And then the, another one was essential, um, which you know people are very concerned about what is essential, what is non-essential. I actually saw a woman with a shirt the other day that said, I'm essential. I love it. But guess what the number one phrase was that people in a pandemic are hating? It's new normal, the phrase the new normal. So why would people hate that one more than social distancing? And what this article was saying was because it's an oxymoron, new and normal, uh, but also because it's like a negative connotation. When people say we have to get used to the new normal, that this article is saying it just kind of feels too negative. And so I was thinking about, you know, post 9-11, we had TSA, and with TSA means that now you have to take off your shoes and you have to take off a belt and, unless you get in the fancy line. And there's all these kind of extra inconveniences that people would say that's, that's the new normal. And some of you maybe didn't know this, but there was a point you could just go into any airport and just kind of walk in and cruise right up to the gate and watch airplanes take off and land and no one asked you anything. But that's part of the new normal, that, that things have changed. But the main point of this article that the person was saying um, that people are so frustrated about that phrase is they were saying that it suggests permanence, meaning that this is permanently the new thing, and it's a permanence of change, and that that was the reason why this phrase was terrible. And if you think about it, many of us, especially in the West, we don't like that idea that something, something is changing, but also that something is permanent. And so... I just want to say this, as you're kind of, you know, maybe have a range of emotions around this phrase or these, this season that we're in. I think it's normal to think about the new normal. Um, right now, I have a lot of what ifs happening inside of me. And I've just, you know, I'm not worrying, but I'm thinking about some of these what ifs that kind of all swirl in my mind, really as it pertains to the church. And I'm thinking, okay, hope community, I'm, I'm called to help lead this church. And what if the faith of this body really wanes? What if people quit serving? What if people quit worshiping? What if people quit giving? What if people quit caring for one another? That's a lot of what ifs. And I'm guessing there's some what ifs for you as if you have kids in school or job type stuff or health. There's a lot of what ifs. What are they? Name them. I think it's helpful to think what they are. Because over the next two weeks, um, We're going to navigate this thing called the new normal. So I just saw that it's a hated phrase, and now I'm naming a series called New Normal, Navigating the New Normal. But we're going to do it through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. So let's take two weeks to look at the Holy Spirit and actually how the Spirit plays out and works in a a season of crisis. And and I would say the season, uh, the series that we just ended on prayer, I felt very convicted, and I was not the only one, that we should go forward in teaching and preaching about prayer. And then other people, elders and staff said, yeah, we need to have Facebook opportunities for people to pray and to learn to pray. And, And we've done that almost every day during the week. We've talked about prayer for almost six weeks. And I've been getting texts from people saying that their prayer life has come alive that people have been Christians a long time are praying again, and there's fervor and strength in it. And so I'm glad we did that. And I would say now I feel as compelled to teach on the Holy Spirit. As a pastor, as a preacher, as a leader of this church, I would say these are the best gifts that I know to give you in a pandemic. 
I know you want me to tell you when this and how that, but I can't. But I can give you this. I can point you towards prayer, which leads you towards Christ. And I can point you towards being aware of the Holy Spirit, which causes you to have a bigger view of what we're in right now. So that's what we're going to do. And I want to start by asking you a question. If, if, if someone came to you and said, what is the job of the Holy Spirit? Like, what's the role? What does the Holy Spirit do? What would you say? And for me, my answer has been this, that the Holy Spirit is an illuminator. And so throughout the week on my whiteboard, I'm writing this, the illuminator, and then I get kind of my mind going, it sounds like the Terminator and then Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's the opposite of the Terminator. Think of what an illuminator or illumination is, that what I was thinking about, like if your power goes out, there's chaos with darkness. But what happens when someone finally finds a flashlight or a candle and they turn it on? What happens when there's light in the midst of the chaos? Peace comes. And actually orientation, right? Okay, I know where the wall is. I know what. And start, we start to have peace and orientation. And actually it leads towards hope. Like, okay, we can start thinking about next steps or down the road. That's what illumination does. And I would say it's a great example of what the illuminator or the Holy Spirit does. So we are going to look um, at John's gospel this week and a little bit next week as we start to um, look at the role of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's John's what they call farewell discourse. So Jesus is telling the disciples, you know, this is kind of the end of his time on earth, and he's describing the one who will come, the Holy Spirit, and really what he's describing is an illuminator. And I want to kind of unpack that as we look at John 14. Verse 25, listen to this. He's talking to the disciples. He said, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, so that's a name that Jesus gave towards the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Okay, just in that little text, as Jesus is telling us about the Holy Spirit, we got some reminders. The advocate, the one who will be an advocate, the one who will teach, and the one who will remind. So let's unpack that for a second. Why an advocate? Well, the disciples are in crisis. Uh, The disciples are being overcome with fear. The disciples are saying the what ifs, kind of like we're saying right now. There's crisis. There's what ifs. There's fear. And so Jesus speaks into fear, which is what he does. And he says, I promise you an advocate. And another way that's been translated, if you have a different translation in your Bible, sometimes it's helper, sometimes it's encourager, sometimes it's counselor. I've even heard it called the holy companion. But all those are descriptions of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does. Advocates, helps, encourages, counsels, is a companion. So I would say, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me, just like the disciples, as Jesus is saying this some 2,000 years ago, I hear Jesus saying to us, you need divine assistance. Especially for a season of crisis, you need divine assistance. So here's another question. How does the Holy Spirit then assist us or encourage us in a moment of crisis, in a pandemic? Well, Jesus says at that time, he said that the Holy Spirit will teach and remind the people of God. And what he's specifically talking about is, will remind the disciples of what Jesus has already told them, of the truth that Jesus has already told them. And so we all need reminders, and the Holy Spirit plays this role of reminding us of the message and mission of Christ. And here's where we find ourselves right now, I would say culturally, and in this COVID season, is that the truth of Jesus Christ is is getting lost in the shuffle. I have to admit that even for Christians in our church and people I talk to, it's like the truth and promises of Jesus are being put to the side for the information that's coming from the government or this website, and we're leaning on to all this other research without really going first and seeking Christ. And so, friends, we really do need the Holy Spirit to illuminate the truth of Christ, the promises of Christ right now, as much as maybe ever before. Uh, And and I'll give you an example of how I'm seeing this. 
I know Katie has helped put a lot of our small groups together, and groups are still meeting on Zoom, that she and others, uh, Kathy, have put together this prayer time where people are sharing on Facebook about what they've learned in prayer. And I love it. It's not staff people. It's just normal people in our church. And then even the prayer time I've been doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays and helping teach through prayer and talk through prayer and people have been sharing. Let me tell you what I'm seeing. That the Holy Spirit has been illuminating truth for people in those groups and even through Facebook Live and on our Facebook page. And what the Holy Spirit's doing is illuminating the truth of God's Word. That people are are learning and finding comfort in the promises of Christ through Scripture, and the Holy Spirit is illuminating that. And as a little bit of a rabbit trail, if you've ever been in a small group or discussion where we talk about faith, I personally don't need to hear from the smartest person in the room with the most biblical facts. I want to hear from the person who has been praying and seeking God, and the Holy Spirit has illuminated something that they're learning coming from the Word of God. That's the most impactful to me, not just a bunch of facts, because the Holy Spirit illuminates these things. And I really believe that the Spirit is doing something in the lives of a lot of our people. I'm just asking and checking in, so are different people, and I really think that the Holy Spirit is up to something. And so I want to ask you, I want you to actually think about this. You can even pause the sermon if you want. What truth What biblical truth, what thing are you learning about God or even about yourself could the Holy Spirit be illuminating right now, shining a light on that was once dark and like, whoa, and you're learning something right now about God. What is it? Tell us. Share it with me. It's so encouraging to others when when you have been receiving some kind of uh, correspondence from God that's been illuminated by the Holy Spirit. And... The truth is, as you keep reading these statements Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, yes, the Holy Spirit illuminates truth in the ways I just mentioned, but the Holy Spirit also illuminates sin as well. So if you go to chapter 16, this is Jesus still talking. It's this fairly long discourse, a lot, again, about the Holy Spirit. And starting at verse 7, listen what uh, Jesus says. But very truly I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So he's saying it's necessary that I go back up to be with the Father and that I send the advocate or the Spirit. And then verse 8, when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. So what's happening there? Essentially that the Holy Spirit also illuminates conviction. Or sin. And so, why has the pandemic been tiring for a lot of people, including myself in some ways? And here's why, I think. Because I think the Holy Spirit is using this opportunity to reveal and illuminate and expose some dark stuff that might be happening inside us, some stuff that maybe we have not been willing to deal with. And now, through this pandemic, it's being exposed. Um, I've, I've been in, I was supposed to be in New York City this week with a, a conference, and instead it was online, and, and part of the conference was a woman named Sarah Burns at a New York City who's a, a poet, and she read this, t- these two poems, I'm going to share one with you, and it's called Exposed. We're talking about the Holy Spirit is now exposing some things, not just about you all or about the church or about justice issues, but about me, and I really find it to be a prayer, but listen to this, and I'll send it out. Uh, in the newsletter next week. But listen to these words and see if you resonate with this idea of being exposed by COVID. We've all been exposed, not necessarily to the virus, though maybe, who knows? We've all been exposed by the virus. Corona is exposing us, exposing our weak sides, exposing our dark sides, exposing what normally lies far beneath the surface of our souls hidden by the invisible masks we wear, now exposed by the paper masks we can't hide far enough behind. Corona is exposing our addiction to comfort, our obsession with control, our compulsion to hoard, our protection of self. Corona is peeling back our layers, tearing down our walls, revealing our illusions, leveling our best laid plans. Corona is exposing the gods we worship. Our health, our hurry, 
our sense of security, our favorite lies, secret lusts, our misplaced trust. Corona is calling everything into question. What is the church without a building? What is my worth without an income? How do we plan without certainty? How do we love despite risk? Corona is exposing me. My mindless numbing, my endless scrolling, my careless words, my fragile nerves, we've all been exposed. Our junk laid bare, our fears made known, the band-aid torn, the masquerade done. So what now? What's left? Clean hands, clear eyes, tender hearts. What corona reveals, God can heal. Come, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. I want to say that last line. What corona reveals, God can heal. Come, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. You see, the Holy Spirit in this season is illuminating truth that we have to remember, but also darkness. And for the Christian life, for the gospel to be, uh, for the true gospel, it is an illumination of both truth and darkness, reality. And so we, we have to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is exposing in us and around us. And I love the phrase people say, like, you got to do your work. So if, you, if your bitterness or envy or whatever is being exposed in you, what does it look like to do your work? That some of us, including me, can get so concerned that everyone else does their work, but what about your work that the Holy Spirit wants to do in you to refine you and restore you? Because the truth is, as the poem says, God heals. And we do our work and allow God to heal those deep, dark places that can be tricky to get to. And then Jesus gives us one more area that I think is pretty important for us. One more role of the Holy Spirit, and it has to do with illumination. So look at uh, verse 12. It's still chapter 16. Jesus is on a roll about the Holy Spirit, and then he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. I love that. Jesus is like, I got so much to tell, but you can only handle so much, fellas. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. See, these are these future statements. All that belongs to the Father's mind. That's why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So there's these continual future statements that the Holy Spirit will illuminate essentially the way forward. The Holy Spirit is a guide or shows us the truth, right? It says the Holy Spirit will tell you what is yet to come. So that lifts our heads up and our eyes about this is not all there is. Some of you, your heads are down and you're thinking that this is the story, but there's more to the story than just what you see. I hope you believe, because Scripture tells us this, that the Holy Spirit's still revealing, still illuminating, still showing, still guiding, still pointing today. And so this whole kind of thing about illumination is that the Holy Spirit illuminates and shows us the truth of Jesus, reminds us of the truth of Jesus. And that's why we need the gospel in Scripture, to pay attention to the gospel. But the other thing is that the Holy Spirit is reminding us or telling us or teaching us about what's happening right now and and how we are to kind of play things out. And we get that in the letters that that Paul writes. And then you look at the uh, book of Revelation, it's the Holy Spirit is showing what is yet to come. There's this future aspect. To me, that's powerful, that the Holy Spirit is still doing all those things. And the question is, are you paying attention? Are we as the church paying attention? This should change the whole what if stuff. I started with what if people don't come back to church? What if they don't worship? What if they don't serve? What if they don't give? But this should change how we start asking our what ifs. It should change our new normal, what we mean by this new normal. Church, we're in a global pandemic. 
It's just the truth of what we're in right now, and so we have to name it, and that things right now have changed. I'm preaching in an empty room, and things will continue to change. I don't know what is next in a lot of ways, so we're going to see more and more change. But now this is where we're going to flip the what-ifs on their head. What if some of the change is actually a result of the work of the Holy Spirit in you and us? What if the Holy Spirit would actually use your laments, your grief, your disruption for something holy? What if? What if the church, the Big C Church and our church, Hope Community, and what if our homes, whatever kind of home you're a part of, experienced a spiritual revival? And I know as Presbyterians, we don't take about, talk about revival that much, but it's a great phrase of think about the Holy Spirit the ruah, the, the, the breath of God blowing into a body, a physical body or a collected body and breathing new life into it. What if that happens right now because of COVID-19? What if? And I think we have to ask ourselves these questions. Could your heart, could your soul, could your faith use a spiritual revival? The answer for me is yes. It's an absolute yes. So what if this new normal was less about inconvenience and what we can and can't do in the future and how things might change? And what if it was more about the idea that God will not waste this crisis, but he's actually going to use it to strengthen us, to shake us up, and to maybe redirect his people, the church? Now, if this is what we mean by new normal, you have my attention. Let's pray. God, I know for a lot of us, the idea of change is daunting and scary. But change is necessary, especially when that change is not just for change's sake, but it's if the church is being formed more and more into the likeness of Jesus as individuals, if we're being formed more and more into the likeness of Jesus, that requires change. Restoration, renewal, redemption, all those things that glorify you, God. So we pray, may your will be done. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to look different than maybe we want it to. But change at the end of the day leads towards freedom. Freedom. And it glorifies you. And that's what we want to be about as the church of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Obviously, there's a lot of things that have been happening in our community. And I, um, we've been saying the Lord's Prayer, as you know, with videos of people after the sermon. And now we want to return to what we do if we were physically gathered. We say the prayers of the people. And... Again, there are people who are experiencing all kinds of great things, and others are struggling. And so I've asked Katie just to pray for us to kind of cover a lot of those bases of what we've heard from you all, as I have, and the elders, and Katie have been checking in with a lot of you. So she's going to lead us in this time of prayer. Um, Lord, we come to you just grateful for um, this message and the opportunity to worship together, even if it is a part. We are united in spirit, Lord. And uh, this community has so much going on, families with young kids who are learning, continuing to learn how to care for one another without the um, things outside the home to go to and participate in, Lord. I pray for those families that you would continue to infuse them with strength. Lord, we pray for all the essential workers in this community who have to go to work and that they would be protected and kept safe and healthy during this time, Lord. Um, We pray for those who are experiencing stress in their jobs in this new season, but we also celebrate members of this community who have gotten new jobs and stepped into a new season in this time, Lord. Um, We pray that in this disruption, we would hear your voice and follow it clearly. And lastly, Lord, I pray for all the students out there, the college students and the high school students and the graduates, Lord, um, that they wouldn't feel that anything had been necessarily taken from them during this time, but that their transition would be a holy one and that they would feel your presence and celebrate with their friends and family and know that they are loved even in this unique season. Um, Lord, we we ask that you be with those of us who are grieving in this time, who feel isolated and alone. Lord, spur us to love one another well and to reach out, to join hands, 
and um, be a part of this, even though we can't physically join hands, join hands in spirit, Lord, um, as we unite to uh, be a body. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm going to ask that you would stand like we do every week. We're going to sing the doxology. And as we sing this together, um, I just want to remind you as, as we kind of conclude this time together that it's possible to kind of elevate the conversation. I, I want to call Hope to elevate the conversation a little bit. I know we all have thoughts and opinions about getting back together, not getting back together, and how we do it. But what if we kind of elevated a little bit and said, some of these what-if questions. What if the Holy Spirit might actually be reviving us as families, as individuals, as a church? To me, that's so much more exciting to talk about than some of the other things. And I actually think it's what God wants us to pay the most attention to. What is God's Spirit doing in you and around you right now? And I would actually ask that as we're done and you kind of turn this off, that you'd sit in that for a second. What is the Spirit doing? And lean into that, press into that, Tell us about that, because we want to be encouraged as well as to what God just might be illuminating, the Holy Spirit might be illuminating in and around you. So let's sing the doxology together so we can end with praise on our lips. Praise, praise God, God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go with the peace of Jesus. Have a great week.